morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer with Resurrection Lutheran Cooperative Ministry on this Saturday morning. Hope you're having a great day. Um, it's always a great way to start the day when we praise God and hear his word. I have my morning tea and so glad you're able to join Tom and I. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light in our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. O oh, come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light, and our life. O oh, come, let us worship him. Our psalm today is Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm, he has won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise in all that is in it, the lands of those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. Let us pray. Lord, we sing to you a new song, for your victory is ever new. In the empty tomb, you have given us a glimpse of your future, and in your victory over death, you have shown us how we shall overcome the last enemy. As the sea roars and the hills sing together, we too will praise you for your great triumph, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, we continue in our story of Esther in the ninth chapter. Now in the twelfth month, which is the month of Adair, on the thirteenth day of the same, when the king's command and edict were about to be executed, on the very day when the enemies of the Jews hoped to get the mastery over them, but which had been changed to a day when the Jews should give the mastery over their foes, the Jews gathered in their cities throughout all the provinces of King Ahasuerus to lay hands on such as thought their hurt and no one could make a stand against them for the fear of them had fallen upon all peoples all the princes of the provinces and the satraps and the governors and the royal officials also helped the Jews for fear of Mordecai had fallen upon them for Mordecai was great in the king's house and his fame spread throughout all the provinces for the men of Mordecai grew more and more powerful. So the Jews smote all their enemies with the sword, slaughtering and destroying them, and did as they pleased to those who hated them. In Susa, the capital itself, the Jews slew and destroyed 500 men, and also slew Parshatatha and Dalphon and Asphata and Poratha and Adelaia and Arathea, and at Parmashta, and Arasa, and Aradia, and Valzitha, the ten sons of Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the enemy of the Jews, but they laid no hand on the plunder. That very day the number of those slain in Susa, the capital, was reported to the king. And the king said to Queen Esther, In Susa, the capital, the Jews have slain five hundred men and also the ten sons of Haman. What then have they done to the rest of the king's provinces? Now what is your petition? It shall be granted you. And what further is your request? It shall be fulfilled. And Esther said, If it please the king, let the Jews who are in Susa be allowed tomorrow 
also do according to this day's edict. And let the ten sons of Hammon be hanged on the gallows. So the king commanded this to be done. A decree was issued in Susa, and the ten sons of Hammon were hanged. The Jews who were in Susa gathered also on the fourteenth day of the month of Adair, and they slew three hundred men in Susa, but they laid no hands on the plunder. Now the other Jews who were in the king's provinces also gathered to defend their lives and got relief from their enemies and slew 75,000 of those who hated them, but they laid no hand on their plunder. This was the 13th day of the month of Adair, and on the 14th day they rested and made that a day of feasting and gladness. But the Jews who were in Susa gathered on the 13th day and on the 14th day and rested on the 15th day making that a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore the Jews of the villages who live in the open towns hold the fourteenth day of the month of Adair as a day for gladness and feasting and holiday-making and a day on which they send choice portions to one another. And Mordecai recorded these things and sent letters to all the Jews who were in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, both near and far, enjoining them that they should keep the fourteenth day of the month of Adair, and also the fifteenth day of the same year by year, as the days of which the Jews got relief from their enemies, and as the month that they had turned from them from sorrow into gladness, and from mourning into a holiday, that they should make them days of feasting and gladness, days for sending choice portions to one another and gifts of, of, to the poor. So the Jews undertook to do this that they had begun, and as Mordecai had written to them, for Haman the Agagite and the son of Hamadatha, the enemy of all Jews, had plotted against Jews to destroy them and had to cast pur, uh, pur, that is the lot, to crush and to destroy them. But when Esther came before the king, he gave orders in writing that his wicked plot, which is had devised against the Jews, should come upon his own head, and that he and his son should be hanged on the gallows. Therefore they called these days Purim, after the term Pur. And therefore, because of all that was written in this letter, and of all what had faced in the matter, and of what had befallen them, the Jews ordained and took it upon themselves, and their descendants, and all who joined them, that without fail they would keep these two days according to what was written, and at the time appointed every year, that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation and every family, province, and city, and that these days of Purim should never fall into disuse among the Jews, nor should the commemoration of these days cease among their descendants. Then Queen Esther, the daughter of Abihel and Mordecai, the Jew, gave full written authority confirming the second letter about Purim. Letters were sent to all the Jews, to the, to the hundreds, and to the seventy-five provinces of the king, kingdom of Ahasuerus, in words of peace and truth. And these days of Purim should be observed, and at their appointed season, as Mordecai the Jew and Queen Esther enjoined upon the Jews, and as they had laid down for themselves and for their descendants with regard to their feast and their lamenting, the command of Queen Esther fixed these practices of Purim, and it was recorded in writing. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be God. to God. So now you understand what Purim is and that great Jewish feast. Our New Testament reading comes from Acts, the 20th chapter, beginning with verse 1. After the uproar ceased, Paul sent for the disciples, and having exhorted them, took leave of them and departed for Macedonia. When he had gone there these parts and had given them much encouragement, he came to Greece. There he spent three months, and when a plot was made against him by the Jew and it was about to set sail for Syria, he determined to return through Macedonia. Sophiter and Berea, the son of Pyrrhus, accompanied him, and of the, of, and of the Thessalonians, our, um, Aratarchus and Secutus and Gaius and Derby and Timothy and the Asians, Tychicus and Tophimus, 
These went on and went waiting for him at Taurus, uh, Troas, but we sailed away from Philippi after the day of the unleavened bread, and in five days we came to them in Troas, where we stayed for seven days. On the first day of the week, when we were gathered together to break bread, Paul talked with them, including to depart, intending to depart on the morrow, and he prolonged his speech until midnight. There were many lights in the upper chamber where he was gathered, and a young man named Eutychus uh, uh, were sitting in the window. He sank into a deep sleep as Paul talked still longer, and being overcome by sleep, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. But Paul went down and bent over him, and embracing him said, Do not be alarmed, for his, uh, for his life is in him. And when Paul had gone up and had broken bread and eaten, he conversed with them a long while until daybreak, and so departed, and they took and they took the lad away alive, and were not a little comforted. But going ahead to the ship, we set sail for Assos, intending to take Paul aboard there, for so he had arranged, intending himself to go by land. And when he met us at Assos, he took uh, he took him on board and came to Marte. Uh, uh, Mytilena, and sailing from there, he came the following day opposite Chios. The next day, we touched at Samos, and the day after that, we came to Miletus, for Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus, Ephesus so that he might not have to spend time in Asia, for he was hastening to be at Jerusalem, if possible, on the day of Pentecost. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, uh, Paul. Yeah. Oh, in many and various ways, God spoke to His people of old by the prophets, but now, now in these last said, days He has spoken to us by His Son. Son. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to His people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior born of his house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. And the tender compassion of our God, the, the dawn from on high, shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, Heavenly Father, in whom is the fullness of light and wisdom, enlighten our minds by your Holy Spirit and give us grace to receive your word with reverence and humility, without which no one can understand your truth. For Christ's sake, amen. amen. O Lord, Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we might not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. And in all that we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Lord Almighty bless us and direct our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining Tom and I on this Saturday morning in the, uh, and we hope that in the 19th week of Pentecost. And I hope you have a great and safe day. Pastor Matthew will be on later on this evening with evening prayer. And I hope you'll be able to join him. And I hope you'll be able to join us tomorrow morning also. And also with our regular worship service tomorrow morning, too. Have a great day and God bless. Bye-bye.